So a recent commenter on my videos asked if I could do something showing off a nine front specific innovation like BMX. BMX was added to nine front a few years back to take advantage of the virtualization features until it added to their CPUs. First off, you need to check if your nine front system can even do this. And the command for that is aux I can has VMX. And if it says yes, and you are the kind of masochist who loves the gory details of how operating systems boot, you are in for a great adventure. So this is the man page for the VMX command. And uh, there's not much to it. As far as virtual machine software goes, VMX is pretty immature. It does work, but you'll spend a lot more time uh, diving into technical papers and mailing lists on your guest operating system um, than you will going into details on how VMX works. Um, because VMX doesn't have a lot of fancy options to do a lot of things for you. The folks who put together Ninefront also seem to be fans of OpenBSD. They have instructions to boot it. If you're into open source projects in general, the OpenBSD people do a lot of great work and are generally a good source of information. But I figured I would try Linux as it is more popular and probably closer to what people have in mind when they want to run something that covers plan, what Plan 9 lacks. And I went with Mint Linux because it's what I had laying around. Uh, booting the install ISO was no problem, but it gave me trouble trying to boot the finished install. So I tried some others, which also failed, and I circled back around to Mint, and finally got it working after a couple hours and many reboots. So, what you will need. You will need a Linux install ISO. Uh, you will need a big empty file. Like these. Um, you can just use DD to make a big, you know, empty file. Or you can actually use a thumb drive and put that in as a, uh, as an option for your install drive. Um, and this is where it gets tricky. VMX needs the kernel and the support files to be outside the virtual machine's drives to boot. It doesn't have enough of a BIOS to read them off the boot media. So you'll have to mount the ISO, find the kernel and its init RD file, and put them in the file system. So for the Mint Linux, that was uh, this guy here, which isn't the actual name. I had to rename it while I was, you know, trying to get this to work. And... Uh, this was the initrd file I needed off the, um, came out of this ISO file. The VMX command is pretty straightforward. So you'll need, uh, well, first off, uh, VMX only does one CPU, so there's no options to choose one or multiple CPUs. So first, capital M, We'll set the RAM, and if you put a number with a capital G, that'll make it so many gigabytes. The dash N flag will set the network, and I just have the one oops, network in here, network card, so Ether0. Uh, dash D will set your virtual hard drive. And then you can add another dash D to add in your ISO file, sort of like adding a CD-ROM. Dash V is your video options. And if you want graphics, you'll put Visa, a colon, and the resolution you want. Then you'll need a lowercase m, and this will be your support file. 
So in this case, I'm going to go with this one. And then no flags for the kernel. You just put it in at the end. And then you hit enter. And here it goes, booting up the um, the install ISO. And you can click in the window and it takes over the mouse inside. To get it out, I found that if you just like spin the mouse really hard outside, it'll pop out. But if you go slow, it kind of gets stuck inside. So you gotta really spin it to get out. And here it is. So from this point, you could just go through um, all the install steps. Um, you can use the, you know, the blank file shows up as your hard drive and uh, you will want to keep track of what exact device gets used as your root file system because you'll need that later. So that's why I listed mine first because it automatically shows up as uh, dev A. I've already gone through the install, so it's already in here for me. But yeah, as you go through the install process, keep track of where exactly it's putting everything and what it calls it in the system because you'll need to relay that to the kernel later. Um, you'll also need to get the finished install kernel and init rd files off. So for this particular Linux, it's in the boot directory. And that was, for me, that was these two guys here. Uh, you might have to get creative to get them out of the virtual machine. In my case, I have a free BSD file server set up in my house. So Linux has no problem talking to it. I just sent the files over there and then pulled them back into my nine front system. So now I've told Linux to shut down, but if you look at the stats, you'll see most of my RAM is used up. Sometimes the VMX lets it go, but quite often it doesn't. So if you run the VMX command again, It crashes. I've done lots of goofy things on Ninefront, but nothing will crash it faster than VMX. It has some pretty low level access to the system and will quickly blow up the kernel if you aren't paying attention. But I'm running this on a diskless terminal, so no big deal. I can just reboot. So now I'm back and I want to boot the installed Linux system. And to make this more interesting, I'm going to run it off a CPU server. At least that way I don't use up all the RAM on my terminal. So I'm here where all my ISOs and kernels are kept and I'll run our CPU. So now everything in this window is running off the CPU server. So we type out the command again, go VMX, go 4 gigs of RAM, the default network adapter, use the hard drive image I have in here, uh, but I'm going to skip the install ISO this time because I don't need it. my video. So this time the support file will be this one that I pulled out of the finished installed system. And then the kernel
same thing. It's the one out of the finished install. And then it wants a boot argument to go with it. So after you put in the kernel, you can put in arguments to pass to it. Put it in single quotes. And in this case, it wanted to know where the root file system was, which is why I had to keep track of that. So it was in virtual drive A partition 5. And here we go, it's booting up again. And here I am on my virtual Linux machine. Uh, there will be a little bit of lag, especially in this case, because the virtual hard drive sitting on the demo file server, uh, the actual CPU is on a separate machine, the demo CPU machine, and then it's all being displayed and grabbing the mouse and keyboard from the demo terminal I have set up. So it's actually three computers involved here. It's all going over the network, but works all right. Uh, as you can see, I have Firefox. And it does all the stuff Firefox does, so you can even have YouTube. So you gotta keep in mind this is running off a uh, single processor system here. So it just sees the one CPU, um, and there's four gigs of RAM. And it even plays videos, although I'm not quite sure on how to get the uh, the sound out of it yet. Yeah, there you go. So if for some reason you feel the need to run Linux on your nine front system, it can be done. Um, if you'd like to try it yourself, um, good luck. <laughs>